there's this, this battle against the Philistines that, they, that the children of Israel end up losing. And they take, you know, they, they bring, they're, they're already afraid and they don't want to do this fight. And they're like, let's bring the tabernacle, or I mean, not the tabernacle, the Ark, the Ark of the Covenant, right? They're going to bring the Ark of the Covenant as like their lucky charm, their rabbit's foot, right? Because they think that if we just have this box here, then we're going to win because they've, they've lowered God to just be like in some, some object already in their hearts to think that this is just going to win our, our, our battle here. And it got them all motivated and it got the other side scared, but then they still lost. Why? Because their hearts weren't with it. They weren't, they weren't with, right with God. No box, no man-made object. Is, you know, God's not an idol. The power of God doesn't come through these, these physical things, these physical objects. So they, so they lose that battle, and then the, uh, the ark is taken by the Philistines, but then the Philistines are plagued. They get these, these, these emeralds, and they get these diseases that, like, they are plagued by having it. So, like, we, we don't want this anymore. So let's just, you know, at first they're saying, well, is this a coincidence or not? And they're like, this isn't a coincidence. So they send it off. I'm not going to go through the whole story. You could read it in, um, in 1 Samuel, in the, in the first few chapters. It goes over this. But... Um, they send it back, and then it, it ends up in, uh, I think, Gilead. I forget exactly where it ends up. But there's a few places then at, at that time, and God starts blessing wherever the Ark of the Covenant is. But from that point, kind of going forward, it's no longer in Shiloh. And then Solomon, of course, ends up building the temple, and that's built in Jerusalem. And that is where then um, you know, the tabernacle is kind of replaced, and God's house as it were, is, is created there. So, um, anyhow, Psalm 78, did you get there? All right, Psalm 78, let's look at verse number 58. Psalm 78 goes, does a lot of history of events of the children of Israel. So we're going to jump in here at 58. The Bible says, For they provoked him to anger with their high places and moved him to jealousy with their graven images. When God heard this, he was wroth and greatly abhorred Israel. It means he hated Israel because they were making him angry by setting up these false gods and these altars of false gods and they're sacrificing in high places and they're making God jealous with their graven images and God gets angry. So he gets so angry, he says, here, he abhorred them. He hates them. And because of that, verse 60 says, so that he forsook the tabernacle of Shiloh, the tent which he placed among men, and delivered his strength into captivity and his glory into the enemy's hand. So that story I was just telling you about, you know, the, the Ark of the Covenant being taken and everything. God, of course, let that happen. And what a, what a huge loss. When you consider what the tabernacle represented, what it was for the people living at that time, God, you know, the, the Bible describes it here is that the tent which he placed among men. This is like God's house, God, and this is what was designed by God, and it's, it's patterned after the heavenly things, the heavenly tabernacle, the heavenly mercy seat, everything that was built and that was given unto Moses to, to build on this earth was patterned after the heavenly. And how, what a shame to have something so precious that was actually on this earth among men where God's literal presence was. I mean, how many times we read about the glory of the Lord filling the tabernacle? And glory means as a great light. So when there's something as a glory, there's a glory of this light. Imagine seeing this tent in the tabernacle and just light shining through it and around it because God's presence is in the tabernacle. 